technically is Captain Mal. I don't like those. No, I hope. See, I don't think it will be Firefly. No, it won't. But he's got that attitude. Yeah. He's got that cocky sort of. You know, even that bit. I mean, obviously, people that were listening to it couldn't see it. But where he goes into the, the cell, the guy's putting his earphones on. And he's like, oh, "Hey, they're mine." Yeah. Guy's huge. He hasn't a chance. And, he still and he's still like, up to you know, him. I like that. Bit. Yeah, I like that. I like that. I but Mal could back it up. Well, then again, Star Lord can as well. Eventually. Yeah. Um, the majority of the trailer, of course takes place just with them in the prison and then you get that big sort of boom 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 where it shows flashes this looks massive just from what they've shown the, that is the best way to introduce characters yeah it's great because it gives you the introduction right there yeah. you, now you know who they are I still think I'm now thinking the vibe may be Blake 7 okay yeah I, I can see if that. that I could live with that I can see that um, and of course the great thing with this is that it fits in with Iron Man Avengers and Thor especially and Thanos yeah because Thanos linking that together, this, oh, apparently even if he well even if you don't see him, he's Garnet of the Galaxy, Drax the Destroyer, and Gamora, especially, are very heavily linked to Drax, or at least Drax in the comics. Okay. Um, so there's, they're definitely they're going to have to tie that in somehow. Yeah, it, it, I have to say it looks really, really good. And that's of course comes out in August, um, which is too far away. But thankfully, we have got some movies between now and then. We do. We've got uh, the incredibly exciting looking Captain America, the Winter Soldier, mm. and Amazing Spider Man, and that's just the start of it. See, lots of <laughs> amazings and spectaculars. Yes, and awesomes. <laughs> uh, right. Okay. Let's see what else have we got. Okay. Um, Kyle Reese, Terminator. A little bit of Terminator news. Yeah, because we've got more Marvel news, but we'll talk about that later. Um, Kyle Reese, of course, is the father of John Connor. He's the, mm-hmm. the, the future, the, the leader of the resistance before John comes along. Uh, and he goes back in the past and he meets Sarah Connor in the Terminator franchise. Now, we all know that the new Terminator movie is, it's on its way. That it there's is. a reboot. A, a reboot, a remake, a reimagining, reimagining. same universe. Well, Who knows? So it's following on from the previous Arnie ones and forgetting entirely Salvation, seemingly. Yeah. Which is weird. Yeah. But... Because Salvation was a good movie. Ah, yeah. Do you know what it needs to follow? It was a good movie. It wasn't a good Terminator movie. Okay. It needs to follow on from the Sarah Connor Chronicles. Ignore everything else. That was a brilliant series. I liked the Sarah Connor Chronicles. I love the and idea it, of Terminators all through time. And it got, just as it got interesting, yeah. they stopped they it. They pulled the plug. Of course, with the very lovely, lovely Summer Glow as well. Do you know there's so much rumours about her being the kind of the typhoid Mary of TV? Really? Yeah. Every time she's in something, it gets cancelled. Well, she's in Arrow. An arrow's just been picked she's up not in that, But she's not an arrow anymore at the moment. Mm, okay. So maybe that's why it just got saved. She leaves and it comes back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, okay, so basically with, with you know, Amelia Clark, of course, who everybody knows from Game of Thrones, um, has been cast as Sarah Connor, Zero Dark Thirty actor. Jason Clark has been cast as John Connor. Uh, the movie's going to be directed by Thor, the Dark World uh, director, Alan Taylor. So the only person we were waiting to hear on the casting off was Kyle Reese. And we now know that Kyle Reese will be played by Jay Courtney. Who really his biggest movie so far has been a good day to die hard. His only movie, really? No, he's had a few movies. Yeah, but, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A good day to die hard is a terrible movie, but you know what? He's not terrible. At it. And it was also it was his springboard to this. Yeah, but he hadn't been in that as the son of Die Hard. <laughs> the uh, son of Die Hard, John McLean. Wasn't he meant? Well, no, he's called Die Hard, isn't he? Okay, I don't know. Um, wasn't that meant to be the springboard? Die Hard's for not like a Batman name. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Die Hard. Hard. I'm Die, die hard. hard. Yeah. <laughs> that, that should be a character in Kick Ass Three. Okay. It will be a character in Kick-Ass 3 now, Die Hard. Die Hard. Um, wasn't it meant to be a springboard for the next generation of Die Hards that he was meant to take over the helm? Was it? I don't I, know. I heard that rumour from somewhere, see, but it, it wasn't possibly, an appalling movie. Possibly. It's a terrible movie. It, Although, yeah. the sixth one is in production. But they're both in it, aren't they? Uh, yes. Um, from what I've heard so far, Samuel L. Jackson will be back in as well. Oh, well, that makes everything better. Yeah. Um, and it sounds like it's really going back to basics, whereas basically what they're oh. going to do is they're tying it into the first movie, you know, the Nakatomi Tower. Yeah. Uh, where they're basically, uh, John McLean has been asked to come to Japan to the Nakatomi headquarters to pay tribute to basically him saving the day. Okay. And then terrorists That's attack. never going to go well. And Sam Jackson's going to be there. And apparently there's a scene, apparently Samuel Jackson said he will do it as long as he gets to kill bad guys with a samurai sword, and they have said, we can do that. Whatever you want, Mr. Jackson, <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. Would you like your samurai sword to glow purple? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so I'm off that. Um, as long as they, do, they need to tone it down, the last one was red and red too, but with Die Hard. It, just, yeah. it was too over the top. The first one was pretty over the top in terms of what he survived, but it felt the first one. real. Yeah, the first one. First Die Hard? Uh, yeah, okay. and the second one. Mm. Yeah, and it, second it did, okay. Third, I like the third one, but it did start getting more and more fantastical yeah. in terms of what he could survive and 
the explosions and the madness and everything else. You see, the thing is, people have rose-tinted glasses. Whenever the first movie came out, everybody thought it was amazing. The second mm-hmm. movie came out, everybody thought it was pretty good. The third movie came out, everybody said it was great. And then there was a break, and then the fourth one came out, and everybody was like, it's terrible because there's a bit where he jumps on the back of a fighter jet. You know what? In the first movie, he swung from the side of a building on a hose I pipe. agree. In the second movie, he came out of a jumping plane on an ejector seat. Yeah. In the third movie, a, a, a flooding pipe shot him into the air 600 feet, and he landed on, on his, his feet. Yeah. And you know what? That's just part of Die yes. Hard. But you must admit, a good day to Die Hard did take it it looked it was more special effects and less him I liked it though I oh it's like a good it. action movie but I yeah. liked him Yeah, okay. I want to see more of him but Red and Red 2 is that over the top you know it can't happen but that's why you watch it it's a comic book Die yeah. Hard was it, that shouldn't happen mm. but maybe it could okay so okay. if they take it down a notch it might be slightly better now stay on a little bit with the whole comic book thing because we did veer off with Die Hard there well, well yeah, Die Hard is a Courtney. comic book oh, no no excuse me I got it back I mentioned Red and Red 2 yeah, okay. thank you very much alright alright segue okay. segue okay. see everybody says about how uh, DC don't do good movies Red, I love Red and Red 2 do you know why it was, it was a DC movie yeah, but no not DC but it wasn't and... DC it's a bit like Kick-Ass is not DC yeah um I, I wouldn't count Red as DC. No, but you know what I mean. Yeah. You still get the DC bit at the start of it, and it's still a comic book. That's adaptation. because they wish they had thought of it. Yeah. Um, okay, right. More casting news. I know that you have a wee bit of a thing. Uh, oh, I've got a rant about this, but I have to be careful. This. Yeah. Um, Fantastic Four uh, is getting a reboot, of course, which we know. Yep. Um, it's set to come out on the 19th of June next year. Um, and there's been a lot of talk recently about who they're going to cast in each role. Uh, and it looks now, like according to the rap, it looks like we may actually have our four principles lined up although there has I must stress there has been no official announcement on this yet yeah. but insiders say that this is the lineup. well they've they pretty much they've we've known who Johnny Storm was for the longest time yes or should be sorry if, yeah. it, if it holds true and then obviously Sue Storm and Reed Richards were a little bit afterwards and now there is the new casting news hmm, hmm. yeah um, right well now the first issue and again, and we have to. I, I always like to stress this: this is not a racial issue. It's, but a, it's an issue about race in the storyline, but not, we don't know what the storyline is. I suppose yeah. the Fantastic Four is about family. Yes. So the core of it is Reed Richards and Ben Grimm went to college together, mm-hmm. and they were friends. Sue Storm and Johnny Storm are siblings. They're brothers, yes. sisters, brothers, sisters. Yeah. Genetically yes. related, and they're a little bit younger than the other two. Yeah. In this one, Sue Storm and Johnny Storm, if he's going to be called Johnny Storm, which he may be, he has to be. Either they've got different father and mother uh-huh. or they're adopted or something. Because it, I don't mean he's a brilliant actor, but Michael B. Jordan is a little bit black. Yeah. And um, what you call her, Kate, not Kate Amara, Kate Mara yeah. is very white. Yes. Very, very on each side. Yeah. Now, they're either going to have to do an adoption story or... or they're going to try and just do it as colorblind, that mm-hmm. they're related, but you're not meant to notice that they're different skin. It doesn't, that would, that would break your suspension of belief. Yeah. Or disbelief, sorry. It doesn't matter about the acting quality. If you know they're meant to be related, mm-hmm. it doesn't work. Yeah. I mean, the Fantastic Four are called the first family of comics yes. because they were really the first family in comics. Well, three of them are related and Ben Grimm's like the adopted pet or something like that. Yeah, um, but I mean, at the at the heart of the story is that Johnny Storm and Sue Storm are brother and sister. Yep. And they're going to cast a black actor and a white actress to play the two roles. And again, as you said, it's not a problem. If they had it, cast um, Mrs. Will Smith, uh, Jada, Jada Pinkett, Pinkett yeah. Like, yeah, Jada Pinkett Smith, that's it, and um, Michael B. Jordan, as soon Johnny Storm, I'd have been all over that. That yeah. would be fine. But, but the core of it is that why we don't have an issue with, with a black it's, actor yeah. is that they it's can't the be brother and sister. Unless they're adopted. And they could, you know what? If they do that backstory and they explain it well, fine. The fanboys are going to kick up about this. Well, though. as much as I see, I kind of, I tried to oppose those sort of fanboys when Michael Clark Duncan was cast as a kingpin. Mm. At the start, it grated on me a bit because he's always been a big, fat, white guy. He's a big, fat black guy in the movie. Well, big, strong black guy. Yeah. He played it so well. Yeah. But Kingpin is a B, C, D list character. He wasn't the star of that movie. He kind of turned into the star of the movie, but he mm-hmm. wasn't meant to be. In the Fantastic Four, the four people are the stars, and it should reflect the kind of the characters that came before in some way. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah, the other way to say is Nick Fury was always a grumpy old white guy who turned into a grumpy black guy, yeah. and it was done brilliantly. But again... The core tenant there wasn't that he was a white guy that had a twin white sister or, yeah. you know, whatever. Yeah. So it's it's only that bit's one of the weird casting So it's bits. not a racial thing. It's changing the dynamic it's of the how characters. they do it. Yeah. it. It's the pure dynamic. I mean, if they were both adopted by lovely parents when they were babies and they'd be brought up as family, then yes, they are family. Mm-hmm. 
And that that story could play, but you're right. Some of the fans, comic book fans, won't like it. And, you know, comic book fans are the ones who go to see comic book movies predominantly and bring friends and family and loved ones who maybe aren't comic book fans. Mm-hmm. So it could be a bit of a risk. But then you have got the fact that um, Miles Teller, who I actually don't really know that well, you know, what work he is. <sighs> I was going to say he doesn't look the right part, but then we were having that discussion last week about Jesse Eisenberg mm-hmm. not looking like Lex Luger. Lex Luger, he's a wrestler, Lex Luthor. And I think he'll be brilliant. So maybe Mars Tuller will. But the one that does worry me is the one that's been recently rumoured, who is a very, very good actor, because I loved him in Billy Elliot, and I'm one of the few people I know that liked him in the movie Jumper, is Jamie Bell. Uh, for people that don't know, that, that's the two movies I can think of. He was in a few horror movies as well. He was in King Kong. And King Kong and things, yeah. uh, a couple of World War Two type movies about zombies and death. And yeah, he's, he's not a bad he's, actor. He's a decent actor. He's not brilliant, but he's decent. But he, he isn't big or imposing. and. No. Now and I know he's quite the opposite. He's quite well, small. Yeah, now he even if he bulks up, um, Ben Grimm was a football an American football player in mm-hmm. the comics. Now there's only so many liberties you can take. You know he is meant to be a jock and a bit bullheaded, not thick, but not a genius either. You need that physically imposing character, even as Ben Grimm. A CGI, yes, is going to be used to bulk him up, but it's four very weird casting choices for a reboot that they need because the Fantastic Four two flopped. Fantastic Four 1 wasn't that great in terms of um, critical reception and money, but Fantastic Four 2 really flopped, so they need something stunningly good. Yeah. And just on the casting, I haven't seen too much positivity so far. Yeah, and to be, to be honest, I liked the other two Fantastic Four movies. I liked, I, I pretty much loved the <coughs> first one, liked the second, but it did lose its way a bit. Mm, but I loved the fact that it had Silver Surfer and it had Galactus, and, you know, it kind of, it yeah. was the first... Marvel movie to really the cosmic go there, end. yeah. You know they went. A li- I think the bit that they lost a lot of fans was Galactus. Yeah, you know Galactus should not have been a what was he a Transformer? Yeah, no. He, but I mean, at the end I of know. it, you could see his shadow in you there. Could, yes. they didn't, yeah, it, it's very it, very difficult to show a creature that's a thousand times bigger than Earth. Do I, you know what I mean? Well, you see, now he's not he's not always meant to be that big. It depends on the portrayal. Yeah, I mean, he ha- in the comics he mostly has been like the size of the Baxter Building mm-hmm. rather than. You know. But it's like Unicron. I've always wanted to see Unicron in the Transformers movies. But I've sort of given up on that I've seen Unicron idea. in the Transformers movies. How have you seen Unicron? In the animated one. Okay. Leonard in, Nimoy. In the live action movies. Leonard Nimoy or was it Oscar Wells? Uh, no, Wells was, was Unicron. Unicron, thank uh, you. Yeah. His, do you know? Nimoy was his, Galvatron. His last acting role was in Transformers <laughs> was, movie. Yeah. But what I'm what saying is, I would, I would love to see Unicron in the live action yes. movie. But, but he is a planet. preposterous. You can't do it. You can't then, do it. Didn't you see a living planet in Green Lantern? <sighs> yeah. Like I said, you can't do it. No, you can't do it. You can't do it. Um, Sorry, Ryan. You know I love you. uh, But in the Ultimate Universe, wasn't Galactus like a fleet of spaceships? Let's not go there. He can be anything. Basically, he's entropy. He's death. He's the end of everything. Yeah. Um, Um, But I thought, you know, for all that, you can see him in the movie. There is a hint of him in the cloud and you can see him. I think, do you know the worst thing about Fantastic Four 2 was the fact that you could see Julian, Doctor Doom, Losing the will to live in it. Yeah. He didn't want to be McMahon. there. Yeah, McMahon. Yeah. Um, and now, just to get the fanboys even more up in arms, apparently Fantastic Four are looking at female actors. I think that. No, I think that's a swerve. Doom. I don't think they'll do that. No. Okay. That would. What, I mean, that would mean like, why not have a Spider Man who's a Spider Woman? Mm. I mean, there Sp- is a Spider Woman. Well, there's a few, but she's and not related. No, not, not really. The depending on which one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. So Fantastic Four. Okay. Um, Right, we'll see. We're ha- I'm having difficulty actually getting our guests on so Skype. What, should, what is the summing up? Are we, we're, you know the way we sometimes say cautiously optimistic? I'm cautiously what, terrified about Fantastic Four <laughs> at the moment. Cautiously terrified. Yeah, that's fair. I think that's fair. I, do, I think that, well, the thing to bear in mind here is that this is nothing to do with Marvel. What do you mean? The movie is nothing to do with Marvel. Oh, the, as in the new Marvel the, movie? Yeah, it's yeah. a studio. It's not linked. It's not the same team at all. And outside of Marvel, some of the other movies that are Marvel characters have got a really bad history. Spider-Man's the only one that kind of is doing okay. Okay. You know, things like Ghost Rider. Yeah, let's not go there. No. Yeah, so they don't always do well. <laughs> but it could be worse. It could be the original 1980s Fantastic Four that no one is ever allowed to see. Yeah, it was made only so they could keep the, the franchise rights. Um, okay, right. Now, another piece of casting. So Fantastic Four, we're not too excited We're about. not going to talk about Christopher Pratt again, are we? No. We may have to rant. Well, should we get rid of that? Oh, God, so yeah, that we we are, of actually, yeah, we are. Actually, yeah, we are. I thought we were. No, because this annoys me, and I think it annoys you a little. Unless... I don't know who wrote the news for this one. I wrote the you news. You wrote it. Yeah. Your last line, or one of the last lines, is that they may go for chuckles, like Starsky and Hutch. Yeah. I hated the idea of Starsky and Hutch, not because the original series was tongue-in-cheek, 
but it was gritty. Yeah. And the movie was done. It was it was a Adam completely. Sandler movie. Yeah, it was completely. But ridiculous. it was it was funny. But should, uh, sorry. Anyway, Knight Rider. Over yeah. to you. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, Knight Rider uh, rebooted a few years ago. Um,